another family of shapes that I'm asking you to study for this class are the family of triangles. Now, the official word for these shapes is simplices. If you were to look up the Wikipedia article for simplices, you'll see some nice graphics and some nice tables that'll help you understand these. So a 1D simplex, a 1 simplex or a 1D triangle is just a line segment, a 1D edge with two vertices on the ends. And a 2D triangle is just a plain old triangle. That's how we all use the word in common English. I, I wanna present this shape to you in a slightly different way though. I want you to think of it as three 1D triangles. Remember those are edges. And I want you to connect them together in a loop. And then you fill in the middle with area, just like coloring it in with a pencil. That's important for leveling up to higher dimensions. Now a 3D triangle we learned is a tetrahedron. You take four different 2D triangles and you assemble them all together. You connect them all together so they make this tent shape. And then you fill in the middle with 3D volume, almost like you're injecting it with foam volume. And that's how you make a tetrahedron. So, okay, a 2D triangle is made out of three 1D triangles. A 3D triangle is made out of four 2D triangles. A 4D triangle is made out of five 3D triangles. This pattern continues on, by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take five different tetrahedrons and we're going to connect them together. And then the part that I can't display to you is that you fill in the middle with magic 4D hypervolume. But here's one tetrahedron, right? This orange shape. And I'm just going to start gluing on extra tetrahedra to the faces of this initial tetrahedron. So I have one on the right. I have one on the left. I have one on bottom. And if you can tell, you have to glue one on the back. So now I've got five tetrahedra glued together. Again, notice how I'm gluing two faces to one, two faces to one, always two faces to one. But I'm not done. Here's the part where this shape would have to leave 3D world and enter 4D world. These two faces on the right need to get glued together. If these tetrahedrons were really stretchy, it could work in 3D world, but you know, technically they're not. We have to go to 4D for this. These two faces on the right our buddies, they will also get glued together. These two faces on the top, they get attached to each other. And it's the same around the back of the shape. Pairs of faces that are next to each other will get glued together. Every face gets a buddy. This will surround some hypervolume and you can fill it in and bam, you've got a four simplex, a 4D triangle. Once again, the task is to count the features of a 4D triangle, vertices, edges, faces, fillings. And we use a little bit of algebra to do that. Here's the magic. The boundary of a 4D triangle is made up of five tetrahedra. When we consider them all just sitting there, minding their own business, that adds up to 20 vertices, 30 edges, and 20 faces. You just count them all up. But then you have to think about what happens when you reassemble the shape. The easiest one will be faces. Notice that we are gluing together two faces at a time, always two faces at a time. And so that means you need to take that five times four and divide it by two to get the number of vertices. Now, take a look at any edge of this shape. That very center tetrahedron, the one that originally was an orange color, will be touching that edge, and so will two other tetrahedra. No matter where you look on this shape, we can identify exactly three different tetrahedra that touch the edge. So I have to take five times six and divide it by three to get the number of edges in the shape. For vertices, you take a look at any vertex of this shape and count up how many tetrahedra touch it. And it will be three of the outside guys, in a manner of speaking, plus that secret orange inner guy. 
always four tetrahedra that share that vertex. So I have to take five times four and divide it by four, and that's how I get the number of vertices. And so that's why this chart is accurate. I have five vertices, 10 edges, 10 faces, five fillings, and then one piece of 4D hypervolume because after all, we're building one 4D triangle.